Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Shantae Risky's Revenge. The last part, we did a lot of item cleanup as well as figuring out that our final goal lies in the ocean to the east of Scuttletown. So, let's go finish off the game, shall we? Now we have to head extremely south in this screen in order to get to the actual final area. Uh, head east here. And it is below us by now, I believe. Yeah, a bit more west. South. But, oh, by the way, the fishes have probably the most gruesome death animation I've seen in a while. I mean, look at that shit. Get turned into bones and everything. Nice. If you head west a bit first, you can actually find some last restocks, be it on gems or some hearts, I believe. Or is this all gems? Yeah, there's some hearts. And by entering this door, we actually find the second to last warp squid. On uh, the original version, this would actually warp you between the final one and this, because the final one's beyond this little area ahead of us. Also a save room, just in case you need it. Anyway, when you're ready, dive into the water, because it's time for a bit of an out-of-nowhere genre shift. A la Kirby, actually, because once you head into the next screen as a mermaid... Welcome to the Sunken Cavern, which is suddenly a Gradius game. This goes on a bit too long for its own good, actually, because it lasts a good eight, nine minutes. Love the music it has, though. For the most part, you're just shooting down ca not cackle bats. Uh, that's next game. Uh, tinker bats. While trying to just not get hit. The only enemies you really have to watch out for, though, are the tinker bats on the ground, because they shoot directly up at you. The mines can be annoying as well because they take a lot of hits, but honestly, it's not a very hard section. It goes on for too long, too. So, I guess this is just going to be us watching this. Though it really gives you some time to actually admire their the fish death animation, how they get pretty much vaporized by a bubble. Well, then again, the bubbles did destroy the final boss of Mega Man 2, so, eh, I guess they're pretty good. The bubbles were fairly useful in Mega Man X2, I suppose. Not really, but they were there. Honestly, though, this... As I said before, this section does go on a lot too long. I love the music for it, though. Look it up. In fact, look up this entire game's soundtrack. Look up every Jake Kaufman soundtrack, actually. So let's see, what do I have I can talk about? Hmm... The new Fail Frame came out recently, and I'm looking forward to eventually trying that out. I question how we didn't get a physical release, though, but every other region did. I mean, come on, while Fail Frame never sold well over... Well, amazingly over here, it sold well enough to warrant a physical release, Nintendo. But then again, I suppose that's up to debate. Because the most successful horror series over here is between Silent Hill and uh, Resident Evil. Both of which aren't doing too well nowadays, if you ask me. Not that Resident Evil is doing terribly, uh, it still is a very good seller. It's just the fact that Capcom will only ever really release it and Street Fighter. Meanwhile, Silent Hill just kind of died. Because Konami is doing stupid ideas. Ugh. And even then, they said Kojima never really left, he's just on a very long vacation, which, let's be honest, none of us actually believe. Konami's just trying to keep some of their customers around, probably. Oh well. It is really sad to see Konami go down that bad, though, because they were one of my favorite developers in the Super Nintendo lifespan, because they all love Castlevania, I love Metal Gear, I love Contra, I love... Cat, uh, not Castlevania, uh... Gradius. It's just really sad seeing something in love get destroyed like that. Or fall apart like that. Like a lot of people in Yu-Gi-Oh, apparently, because apparently the power creep has not been more so a power long jump with the way the card game has gone recently. I don't know, I don't really play Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm a Magic the Gathering kit guy. Which, and by re relevance, also makes me a Pokemon trading card game guy. You know, I have a lot of cards, never actually played the game itself. And the music restarts randomly. That actually reminds me a lot of Castlevania Rondo of Blood, where the music would just randomly start and reload due to the fact that it was, you know, CD quality stuff on a Turbo Graphics.
Let's see, we've been in this section four minutes. And we still got a lot to go. So how you guys been doing? I've been doing pretty well. School's going all right. Not a fan of essays almost every single week. Uh, registration actually comes up later this week for semester two. Which is gonna be a thing. Uh, my friends and I aren't even sure what classes we're gonna take. Let alone what classes we're gonna be able to take together because uh, there's this one class that we had to take a test to skip. Oh, thank God it's over! I think we're going back to that test. I'm not actually the only one that's passed it so far. My one friend, we're not sure if he's gonna pass it or not yet because he hasn't taken it yet, even though there's only one test of it left and that's in five days. And here's the final warp squid. So really, if you have anything left you want to do in the world, this is your last chance. And a final save point. And this area. No, this isn't the game glitching. It's supposed to be this dark. Uh, the way you're supposed to find your way around is by just randomly roaming, using the position of the enemies, pots, and water droplets as well. I do believe, actually, that Mimic at the beginning of the game mentioned this area as a pitch black cave that he was trying to figure out his way around in. Nice little detail I like there. It's also here you just get to barely notice the difference that, her, that Shantae hair get, goes through when she's in water. It just turns a slightly darker shade of purple to indicate it's damp, which I actually like that detail a lot. I wish this place had a unique area theme, though, because it's supposed to be, you know, final area, all foreboding and such before the final battle, but they just use the normal cave theme. Also, here's something that, in case you didn't know already, you can climb on these statue faces for some reason. Also, I was wrong earlier. The monkey actually doesn't get an attack unless the bullet damages people. Either way, enter here for the final boss. Ho 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 ho! Make yourself comfortable, Grandpa. Your genie friend should be arriving any moment now. You three, what are you standing around for? You've been paid, now shove off. Hey, the deal wasn't for cash, it was about her brains. In her life's time, supply of coffee! Sorry, change of plans. It ain't worth fighting over. Let's go. I got a feeling things are about to get messy. Well then. Oh, she's crying. Mean. Risky. This is a new low. Turning my friends against each other. It's sick. Ah, you've arrived. It could have gone differently, you know. Maybe you should have handed over those seals in the beginning and saved your friends from such grief. The outcome would have been the same. Now give me those three magic seals, and I promise that your uncle can go free. I can't say the same for you. Don't do it, Shantae! She'll use them to unleash the lamp's hidden power! Take them and run! I can't. Risky wins this time. You guys were dragged into this because I was too weak to do my job. It's my responsibility as a guardian genie to face this, face this on my own. Give Risky the magic seals? Yeah, it doesn't matter what you choose, she gives them to her anyway, so, yes. The magic seals are mine. Your uncle's free to go. Uncle, go now! But... I'll deal with Risky. Get going. You know, the exit's the other direction, old man. Ho 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 ho! In a few moments, the lamp will be restored to full strength, and its dark power will be mine. It's not over yet. There's still time to stop you. You're certainly welcome to try. Ho 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 ho! Oh, we're doing this again, are we? Men! Throw the steam tower and oceanic tinker tub into overdrive. Let's see what this baby can really do. But you're its creator, shouldn't you already know what it can do? Either way, time to fight Risky and her bo boat again. For the most part, it's actually the exact same boss. Except I think it's like four hits and it's down this time. Only difference is it can shoot out an anchor, which you can dunk under. It can do it a maximum of two times, then it'll actually show the barrel. So this is a fight that you're guaranteed to get over in at least eight anchors. It can also do no anchors at all, or one anchor, but and in fact, speedrunning is whether or not it does any anchors, or eight anchors, really. 
And it's largely the same boss fight, though. Kind of disappointing, honestly, for supposedly the big bad of the series. Uh, the only other real difference besides that is that sometimes the cannonballs can show up, shove out Tinker Bats, which are not really a threat. You can take a lot of cheap fight, uh, cheap shots because you're ducking underneath the anchor, but you get shot by the cannonball. Uh, thankfully, though, the anchor chain doesn't count as a as a hitbox. Only the anchor itself does. Well, then again, I'm not sure if the anchor chain counts as a hitbox because it's high enough that you can actually just stand underneath it. Really, though, this boss is just more of a trial of patience than anything else. I like the music, though, though I wish Risky got her own unique boss theme, because final boss it all, right? Then again, I suppose Shantae 1 did that. No, no, even then, Shantae 1, the final boss music was different. For, I think, all the phases. Between the Tanker Tank and this. And, uh, and uh, Risky herself. Come on, give me the barrel. And thank you for exploding on me again. Wait, does it take more than that shot? Does, wait, does it take five shots? Or was that only hit number three and I wasn't even looking? I don't know. I've, I've lost track at this point. It's not a hard fight, though. As I've said before, don't even waste potions on it. It's not worth it. Obviously, though, uh, save before coming in here, because... Final boss, and all. I like the animation on the Tinker Tank, uh, Tinker Tub, at least, uh, especially with the feet. The gears are really nice. Thank you! And with that, it's done. I still wonder how a bunch of wood can explode like that, because there's no mechanics on some parts of this, unless it's just catching fire. You're finished, Risky. Gotta keep your eye on the prize. You see? The magic lamp is back in action and ready to rock. If you still want to know the secret of the lamp, I'll show you. Open wide and say ah. What? <gasps> what? What have you done? Ha, huh. do you understand now? The lamp has the power to suck up and enslave genies. Once captured, the genie must grant every wish her master desires, no matter how evil. That's what your uncle's been hiding from you. With this, I can turn a genie into a weapon of total destruction. No one will dare to defy me. But how can it work on me? I'm only half genie. I'll admit at first glance it seems pretty useless. After all, there aren't any real, real genies left to enslave. But since you're half genie... I figured why not use the lamp to strip you of your powers. <gasps> She's right! My magical half is gone! What's left is... I'm human! Now let's see how you fare without your special powers. Hear me, Genie the Lamp. I command you to appear. That's a nice color scheme. Do not hesitate. Destroy this brat. Don't stop until she has to stay on the floor. Jesus, that's dark. I can't transform. Risky will use my magic for evil. And all I have to fight are th with are these items I've picked up along the way. Please be enough. Final boss against Mega Shantae, I suppose? First off, bring out the Mega Pike Ball, because it's probably the most useful thing against her. On her own, Mega Shantae just walks around and transforms. However, the transformations are what her attacks for. The monkey form is fairly safe. She'll go up and down across the f wall and just monkey ball across every now and then. Always duck unless it begins to dash from the ground level, otherwise it's very easy to dodge. Then she does the elephant, where she likes to dash across the room, jump over her, and then she'll do the elephant stamp, and when she's not powered up, it'll only go up to half the screen. But halfway through the fight, by the way, she'll actually power up. Uh, the power-up form for the monkey form is that she just does more bullets. And then she has the mermaid form, where she jumps up in the air and hurls a lot of bubbles at you. The safest place is underneath her when she's doing it, though. Uh, Vay just as soon as she begins to land, though. Powered up, she'll hurl, hurl bubbles for a much longer time. Uh, she has a lot of HP, I think upwards in the thousands, according to some speedruns, I believe. But honestly, she just is a longer HP sponge. Uh, for first-time players, I recommend being, bringing about three potions and three magic files, but if you're playing like I have, you have nine. It's just, uh, 
War of Attrition, if anything. That said, though, I do like this color scheme. In fact, I think in Half Genie Hero, this is an alternate color scheme for Shantae you can use. I think. Now, I do have to question where the walls randomly came from in this room. Unless this is just the room viewed from a different angle, in which case, what? I like the music, though. At least they actually gave it a f its own theme, unlike, unlike Risky, who really should have her own uh, battle theme, considering, you know, main villain and all. And I have to say, though, this boss is somewhat out of nowhere, but at least it's nowhere near as out of nowhere as Necron. God, I'll never forget Final Fantasy IX for that. Kuja should have been the final boss, not Necron. And also, uh, sorry for nine spoilers if you haven't played the game before. Really, though, it's a lot of the same with this boss fight. It goes on a tad too long for its own good, like the swimming section before it. Part of me thinks they probably should have given it half the HP it has. But that said, though, it really isn't that hard. It's one of those bosses. I'm sure we've all fought one of our lifetimes that have a crap load of HP but aren't that hard. And she explodes! I like it. And actually, that's her death animation, too. Uh, that was Shantae's death animation that she did just there. It's over, Risky. You fool. You would destroy your superior half in exchange for this town full of simpletons. Then enjoy your victory. It's only temporary. The last laugh will be mine. <laughs> How do you moon jump? Shantae, you've won. Uncle, my magic. Gone. You're human now. There, there. Everything's going to be okay. Uncle, what about my hair? I don't know why it chooses to obey. Perhaps it's not genie magic as I once suspected. Perhaps that part of you doesn't come from your mother. Your mother. I've let her and everyone else down because of my foolishness. It's not your fault, fault, Uncle. There's danger always out there. I was the one who rushed in unprepared. Anyway, let's get out of here. The others will want to know what you're safe. And they just kind of get out of there. And Uncle and uh, Mimic's being uh, obscured. So all along, Risky had us thinking that the lamp was a weapon. Where a real scheme was to get, let, get her grubby mitts on your powers. It took nerves of steel to do what you did. Destroying your magical office is pretty gutsy. Bah, who needs magic? First thing tomorrow, we'll start training again. And this time I'll teach you some human moves. Thanks everyone, but still, I feel farther from my mother. From my true home than, able, than ever before. Deep down I want to keep trying, but I'm useless without my magic. Oh hey, you again. Weren't you on the left? Nonsense! This genie, I'm ashamed of my, myself for behaving so badly. It's clear that you love this channel defended to the end! That's why I'd like you to return to Skittle Town's Guardian. Will you take the job? You take me back even without my genie magic? Absolutely. I'm gonna have a talk with the Ammo Baron and get our town back to normal lickety split. You will? Yes. Yes, I'll do it. I'll protect this place with everything I've got, but I won't do it alone anymore. We all love this place and defend it together as a team. And I promise that from now on, I won't be too proud to take help from others, especially you guys. Evil never rests. Risky Boots and her Tinker Bats are still out there. And Ronnie Thompson and her brothers, too. Things will be different from now on. Yeah, but as long as we stick together, evil doesn't stand a chance. And... Pretty abruptly, and in a somewhat bittersweet note, that is the end of Shantae Risky's Revenge! It's more of a setup game than anything in terms of the plot, because you can tell that it's technically unfinished. You can tell they wanted to do a lot more, but they didn't either have the file size or the time to do it, which is disappointing, but on its own, Risky's Revenge? Pretty good game. Although I question why we have to look up all the way into the sky to get to the uh, credits. As a whole, I think it's a good game, but it's probably my least favorite out of all the Shantae games so far. Even then, I'm pretty sure Half Genie Hero is going to be better. The music's still good, the combat still feels nice. It, the amount of dungeons, though, and the length just feels wrong. 
By the way, I love Tyrannical Overlord. That's nice. As a whole, though, I still think it is worth your time if you're a fan of the Shantae series. It's still actually a really good introductory point to the games, because... The difficulty is pretty smooth throughout. There is a bit of a spike when it comes to the Hypno Baron's Labyrinth, but overall, it's fairly good. Plus, if you're playing Director's Cut, you actually have some stuff you can do after beating the game. Uh, first off, though, for beating the game, you can get a couple of different ending images. Which I forget how you get. Uh, here they are. Uh, for beating the game in over four hours and with less than all 34 items, you get a picture of Shantae, which I'm showing on screen right now. If you beat the game in over four hours with all 34 items, you're gonna get the image I'm gonna get at the end of the credits, a, a picture of Risky. For completing the game in under four hours with all 34 items, you get a picture of Roddy Tops. And, uh, in Metroid fashion, for completing the game in under four hours with less than 34 items, you get a uh, picture of Shantae in a bikini. I find it odd that they gave that to one with less than 34 items than all 34 items, but alrighty. Also, for completing the game in Director's Cut, you get Magic Mode, where you have infinite magic, or no, I think double magic. A lot more magic either way, but you have half defense, so it's a lot more item-based. I like it, though. As a whole, though, I can say this game is at least somewhat worth your time. If you want to play it, it's on the DSi, the iOS, it's on Windows through Steam, PlayStation 4, 3DS, and Wii U. Yeah, that's a pretty... I was so close, too. Ah. Uh, probably shouldn't have done the Battle Tower that one time. Oh well. And there's the image of Risky I got for beating the game with my time. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next Let's Play, whatever that may be. See you guys then.